an awesome trip in time back to 1863. Well, welcome back to Finding America. It's really great to see you here. You know, I was thinking the other day, our machines, they're not just metal detectors. They're actually the closest thing that we have to time machines. I mean, if you wanna visit a certain period in history in your area, all you have to do is do the research, head out, turn your machine on, and you'll embark on an amazing journey through history. Not only does history come alive for us each and every time we go out, but we actually get to hold that history in our hands. You know, that's why I still get so excited every time I find something, even though I've been metal detecting for the past 41 years. Just being able to get out there and touch history and make a connection with the people that lived all that time ago, it just never gets old for me. Well, this past Sunday, we headed back to our favorite Civil War campsite. We made some great finds and touched some incredible history. And I really hope you enjoy watching this one. Well, Chris yelled out. I was further up the hill in these woods. I'm gonna walk on down there. It is thick, thick. He said he got something pretty cool. I'm not sure what it is. So, I'm gonna make my way over to him here. To give you an idea of what it's like here. <laughs> uh, let's see. What you got, man? It's not even that deep. Look at that thing. <clears throat> oh wow. I don't know if it's part of a buckle or the bottom of a badge. It yeah. looks like there's an A or something on it. Really? It's a thin stamp metal. Very thin. Oh, no it's not. Oh, that's pretty awesome. Might have been the corner of a picture frame. Uh, yeah. I don't know. It's not very thick though. It's old. <laughs> it does it definitely has something. Oh, that's nice. That's definitely a nice piece. The 45 on the max. Yep, Chris is using his Max with the small coil, 5x8, and uh, of course I'm using my Equinox 800 with the 6, mm -hmm. and Chris, as usual, gets the first find of the day. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think personal items are some of the very best things that you could possibly find at a Civil War campsite. During the war, the soldiers marched incredible distances, and to keep their loads manageable, they carried just what was necessary to survive. Well, they carried very few personal items, but the ones that they did carry, those are ones that they treasured the most. In my mind, that's not just a small piece of broken metal that Chris found. That was part of something that the soldier treasured enough to want to carry that into battle with him. Well, Chris made another cool find. I oh. thought it was going to be an Indian. Oh my gosh, I can see it. It's a 75 It's like right. I guarantee you he thought he had a nice coin out yeah, of here. <laughs> it was green and everything. But, but it's, it's just as good. I scratched at it and I saw a silver coming through. It's a flat button. I'll be dang. Look at this. You see the green? <laughs> yeah, it sure looks did just look like, like an, Indian. an Indian. I think it's plain, but it, it, there is words on the side here. So. Yeah, that's going to be uh, 1810 to 1840s. Nice early one. Yeah, now this... This town we're in is a colonial town, a uh, very early Tennessee town. So not only do we have our Civil War woods here, but since we were a little bit closer to town on this new stretch of woods, I was hoping we might find something like this. Yeah. And uh, sure enough. Hopefully it's first of many. Yeah, now we need that uh, cat bus dime and <laughs> half dollar, all that good stuff. Well, I called Chris over. Yes. <laughs> and uh, well, what do you think, Chris? Uh, pretty good find? I think so. <laughs> I was getting a nine. Now, just to let you know, I'm in field one, two tone. I switched over to 40 kilohertz. Uh, and I started hitting more iron up here. And then I got a nine signal, a lowly nine. I dug down and I thought I saw something and I sure did. I want you to see this. Look at that eagle cuff button. Is uh, there a rim on it or is this a circle? 
No, it's just a regular. Oh my gosh. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I thought I saw a D. No. <laughs> I about freaked out. I don't know. I'm going to get a toothbrush and uh, I'm going to give this uh, camera to Chris here. And while I get my uh, little toothbrush out of here, see if I can maybe see if it's just general service or probably will be. Although everyone was here cavalry, infantry, artillery. The whole nine yards is over here camping. Uh, it's, it's still too hard to tell, but look at that. And uh, it appears to have a shank. Uh, yep, look at that. Oh, yeah, it's sticking up, too. Yep. Nice. How awesome is that? Cool. So, that is going in the fragile box for sure. And, uh, if you're just starting out, get yourself something like this and uh, put some foam and cotton balls in it, whatever you need. And that way that thing is gonna stay just fine with all the jostling I'm doing going through the woods. But that is a great find. <laughs> <laughs> Chris just walked up to me and wanted to show me something he found. Big old hunk of brass. I'll be Lord, am I not in the light? Here no, I was just trying to get it down here. That is unusual. I don't know. Thought maybe rain's guide, but yeah. Don't know. That's a big hunk of brass though. I tell you, I think Chris and I are really happy here because we're getting a lot of signals, which is very unusual for this area. But this new stretch of woods seems to definitely be holding some promise. Dug down on this one, it's giving me a 12 13, and looks like I have a horseshoe. I just saw the end of it, and uh, let's see if I can pull it out of here. There you go. Uh, pretty cool. Yeah, definitely like that. That might have been to a mule. I'm not sure not a big hoof anyway I'm no horse expert but uh, that's a pretty cool relic well just got another 12 signal and I dug another piece to a horseshoe now Chris just dug one a little further up the hill he's up in there so might be a might be a little campsite right here that's what we're hoping and uh, I keep on going to see what else comes up but the, we are getting signals pretty regularly Okay, oh, this is a good one. I was getting a 17 to 19 bouncing around eight inches down finally got it out and I got a really nice Big three ringer Look at that Looks like it's been stepped on it could be fired But that is a beauty Yeah, let's see. Let me see if I can Of course then I dropped it <laughs> there it is that is awesome oh, I got a piece of brass and a piece of lead now oh, now this is not your typical three ringer I see one single ring and this could be an interesting one that I have not found before huh, this might be confederate I don't know but I will definitely uh, look into it and wow great find Well, it's kind of a nice piece here. It was about six inches down, but I got a real nice piece of camp lead. And I kind of like it because it's definitely what you would expect at a campsite. It is a lead splatter from the melting lead near the fire. And uh, just a cool piece. So I'm going to keep on going and see what else we get here. Another nice little find here. Uh, got a little fired uh, 36 cal pistol ball. It's a nice little find right there too. Oh, I got another good find. I tell you, 
Uh, I love using the 40 kilohertz out here. I still find things in this uh, hard, hard hit place. But I was getting, uh, I don't know, it was just a crazy thing. It was all over the place, but I was getting enough of a conductive target, and I went for it. About six inches down, it said it was out of the hole, and check it out. That is it right there. Oh, man. Beautiful Union three-ringer drop bullet. Yep, first time anyone's touched that in over 150 years. Uh, it never gets old finding these. It really doesn't. Yeah, it's just, it's an amazing place. These woods are just incredible. I'll tell you one thing, though. They're a bit spooky on a cloudy day. You always feel like there's eyes on you when you're out here. You just gotta wonder. Maybe some of the soldiers are still around here, but it is kind of a different place, but it's definitely one of our favorite places to metal detect. Well, I got a pretty cool little find here. I was getting on 11, and uh, I dug down and I got, this is a uh, poncho grommet from a Civil War soldier's poncho. Now those ponchos back then, I did a little history segment on them, I think about a year ago, but uh, their ponchos were rubber and they were made by Goodyear uh, during the Civil War. And this little grommet would have been along the edges of the poncho because they could use them for shelter as well. And they could tie it up between a tree and wear it as well. So it was sort of a multi-purpose. They could sleep on the ground, keeps the, kept the water and the damp ground off of them. So very cool little find and another little piece of uh, a soldier's life. Well, Chris said he found, oh, that is really cool, man. Shoot. Not the most exciting thing in the world, but that's a handmade bolt. Man, I like it. Look at that. Uh, wow, that I don't is... think that's a rose head. No. But. I know what you mean, though. Yeah, it's got a weird. It's got a beveled head. Yeah. That is cool. And look at that, man. It's like a, it's like a square nail. <laughs> but then it's threaded down here, too. Yeah. I mean, that is really cool. I love this handmade iron stuff. I just, uh, just amazing. Yeah, I really. That's period. Yeah, I definitely like that, man. I tell you that. That looked good in the display case. Well, uh, Chris said he found something. What'd you get, it's man? Heavy and round. Oh, nice. I'm gonna drop too. Yeah, a little uh, pistol ball, huh? Pistol ball. Sweet. And what was that giving me on your uh, 60, 62, 65. Nice. Bouncing around a little bit. Now, I get people asking, you know, what settings do you use on the 18 knife while you're out here? I actually have the iron uh, up to 35 because it's later in the day. <laughs> you're getting tired of digging everything. Yeah, time. normally this is like zero, zero. <clears throat> but it's in zero mode. Uh, it's out here, man. The ground bounce is at like 90. Really? Which is kind of hot, but yeah, uh, that's it. Pretty much wide open. Yeah, full sensitivity out here in the woods. Yeah, yeah, I'm running mine at 24, full sensitivity. Yeah. There's really not much uh, interference or anything. We just want to punch as deep as we can with the small coils. Uh, very cool, man. Another piece of cool lead. Yeah. Well, I heard Chris give a holler. Uh, I think he's got something good. Got the button? Yeah. Sweet. Alright. Oh heck yeah, man. On the side there. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> That's big old eagle? Yeah. Like, well, I don't know which way it's going now. Oh. <clears throat> I might want to get you in the frame. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Uh, eagle button, huh? Yes. That's awesome. Shank too. Sweet. You would a brush, you would see what he looks like. There you go. Uh, Give it a whack. Gingerly. Man, that's nice. I'm trying to see the shield. Yeah, that's, wow. I'll tell you what. It's got something, I think. Really? Maybe. Huh. Maybe get my hopes up. i get my magnifying glass up. There you go. Oh, let's see. 
Well, I hope it's a letter for you. <clears throat> yeah, I know. I don't know if... It's kind of crusty. Yeah, it's a beauty. Oop! <laughs> it was. There we go. Don't worry, I can find it for you. I have a metal detector. <laughs> yeah, it's going to take some work. That's awesome, man. Nice brown color to that one. Oh, very, very cool. Neat. Well, yeah, and we are out here Sunday, and uh, it's kind of fitting because my favorite find that I'm going to post when I get back home is one of my favorite eagle buttons. Yeah. So, <laughs> I brought it with me to show Chris, and uh, I think it's rubbed off on us. We both found an eagle button today. <laughs> it's just weird, man. <laughs> How good. Well, I'm actually very happy with this signal, even though it's just a tiny little thing. I don't know. It was just giving me a squeak in the iron and I'm like ah but it was actually repeatable it was really strong yeah it sounded good and uh I say it, it, that that little coil killer and the 40 kilohertz is so awesome for finding this type of stuff look at that now I cleaned the dirt out of the center of it but that is an unused percussion cap and on it that's my first one I found one that was uh fired but it was a really tiny one and that is my pinpointer telling me it's lost. <laughs> but check that out. That is so cool. So I am very happy to get that. And it's funny. It's a it's a little things in life that keep you <laughs> that keep you going. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah, boy oh boy. Well, for me, the finds from this hunt really opened up a window into the lives of the soldiers that lived in this camp and what they considered to be the most important to carry with them into war. Now, Chris and I both had an incredible time during this hunt, and I really hope you enjoyed watching this one. Now, don't go anywhere just yet. I have some amazing pictures from this period coming up in just a few seconds. And remember, it's history that makes a find a treasure, and I cannot wait to see you back here next week on Finding America.